Hey guys, it's Balloon here. I'm a 7.8k MMR uh, coach based in Southeast Asia and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to win the mid lane 95% of the time uh, using a very simple trick that most high MMR players would abuse in their games. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is a matchup where it's Ember against Wind Ranger. I'm playing as the Ember and a student that I'm coaching who's around Ancient Bracket is playing as the Wind Ranger. So what I'm going to be demonstrating here is how to play a melee matchup into a range matchup and it's very important that you know how to do this from the get-go at level 1 and 2 because most lanes uh, they are usually decided around level 1 and 2 which are the first four ways so you need to know how to play the first four ways properly so what needs to happen in the lane is since you're a melee let's say you're playing as a melee here and the enemy is a range uh, you have to find a way to pull them in otherwise it's very hard for you to uh, do any form of harass or you're just going to be like CSing, trading CS you know, just in an encrypt and lost sitting. That's not the way that you can win mid lane actually. Winning mid lane comes from forms of punishment whenever someone takes a creep. So for instance, in this example here, uh, what my job would be to do as the melee here is I need to find a way to pull this guy into me for me to push him out like this, right? So everything starts with the range creep aggro. I need to bait him in to take this range creep and as he's coming for this, I'll move up and push him out. So if we flip this on the other end, him as the uh, range hero, he needs to prevent me from doing this. Or he needs to find a way to punish me every time I do this. So if he's a range hero, once I move up, he needs to already be uh, hitting me. Because uh, if he's a very good player, he'll know that I'll be pulling the aggro to the range creep. So he has to hit me like two times. And my job would be, uh, as the mini hero, to try and pull him in and try and prevent him from hitting me. So let's play this out. Okay, so immediately the first thing that I did is uh, I clicked him, right? Clicking him allows these creeps to come to my range creep, creep aggro. Very important if you want to win the lane because laning phase is literally just understanding how to abuse creep aggro. So once I do this, immediately I'll know uh, what the guy is going to do. He's going to attempt to take the range creep and my creeps are going to move into his range creeps, uh, into his range creep. So as this happens, I have two options. One, if the enemy hero is stronger than me, I will just deny this uh, and that's good enough. And then I'll pull the creeps away from the hero and just farm here. Or like run around circles, try and hold it for an next wave that comes. Or just pull it all the way past the tower. Let's say it's quite even or I have the advantage. Then I'll move up and push her out, uh, push the guy out by taking his range creep. This is usually done by using a spell, uh, bringing the creep low enough so that when you stand up here, you, you are able to both secure the range creep and also push the hero out as the hero is coming in for the range creep. So let's sort of uh, play this situation out. Okay, so I see this now. I know this guy wants to take this range creep. That means I have to move up to protect this range creep. This is very important at level 1 and 2 because at level 1 and 2, almost every hero uh, matchup, it's very impossible that you get something that's like right off the go, 100 to 0 advantage. Like you cannot even trade, right? So what you have, even as a Viper or Huskar, um, at level 1, they are not that strong. But once they hit like level 3, your lane is pretty much gone. So you need to find a way to uh, leverage on the amount of advantage that you can push from level 1 and 2 itself. Everything starts by doing this. So you'll aggro to range creep, you'll move up, and you push the guy out as the guy attempts to take the range creep. Okay, so let's play this out. Now notice, the first thing that I did immediately is I know this guy wanted to come, so I'll move up, open my spell, push her out. The last thing you want to be doing is just to deny this, right? That's not the right thing to do because if you do that, uh, this guy is just going to use a spell, secure a range creep, and by the time this guy hits like level 3, you have done no form of harass to him, so your lane is pretty much dead. So it's very important that you do this from level 1 and 2 itself. Okay, so just from this example itself already, the guy has suffered a lot of damage from me, from level 1 itself. You cannot just be attempting to deny your creep or last hit a creep. You need to push the guy out. Now let's try and look at another example. So over here, uh, we see a similar thing where enemy, uh, enemy hero is like far away from me and I need to find a way to pull him in again in order for me to push her out. So I will pull aggro into this and I'll know he'll move into this. When he does this, I have two options again. If I'm strong, I'll move out and push her out with my spell. If I'm weak, uh, then I will just deny this and pull the creeps away with me if I have no spell. So in this case, if my spell is on cooldown, I'll pull away. If my uh, spell is off cooldown, I'll pull into this 
uh, pull the creeps into my range creep, move out and push out with my spell. Okay, so my job would be to push, pull all these creeps into me because she's a range hero. It's very hard for me to hit a hero uh, without the hero being in my face. So I need to bait her in with the range creep. Like that. Okay, now again. Oh, I see my, my um, flame guard is coming off cooldown and I know this range creep again. So every creep that this guy is taking, he needs to know that he's going to pay a form of uh, punishment for it. He needs to lose some form of his health. You cannot just be looking at creeps to last hit creeps. You cannot look at creeps to deny creeps. Because that's not how you're going to win the mid lane. So right there and then, notice the first thing I did again, flame guard is up. He wants to take the range creep. So move up, bring her out, push her out. Every hero has a way to do this. Uh, this is Amber's form to do it. Uh, this is Amber's way to do this by using Flame Guard to push an enemy out. Uh, if it's Windrunner, on the flip side, should use a power shot, hit me like a few times to push me out. So now we have rotated over uh, the heroes. Our, I played the Wind Ranger and he's playing the Amber Spirit. Uh, so my job as the range hero now is to right click the fuck out of him every time he attempts a creep. So that's my form of punishment. As long as he wants to take a creep, he needs to know he's losing a form of his health. Okay, so like that, immediately I'm already clicking him. So I'm going to click him all the way and not stop clicking him until I find that he attempts to run out and burn me out or he's starting to do more damage to me than I'm doing to him. Uh, whether that's like pulling aggro to myself or or like him plus uh, creep aggro hitting me. Right, so just keep hitting him, keep hitting him, okay. Now, just like that, I've already gotten 3 hits on him. That's my form of punishment. So also something like that, because I know this uh, range creep is going to be contested soon. Your job is to secure the range creep. Like I said, you have to secure the range creep uh, and ideally use a spell to secure it and hit the hero at the same time. If the creep is like full health, you cannot really wait for it to die slowly because if this hero is around, you will want to throw a spell fast kill this creep fast and start pushing him out fast. Okay, so if a hero is next to a creep and you see a creep that's dying, uh, usually the range creep, start killing it, throw a spell on it, push the hero out. So something like this. Okay, that's fine. I've uh, lost the uh, range creep, but nonetheless, the idea remains the same. Now that he's in my face, I need to find a way to go away from him because he's a melee hero, I'm a range hero. The advantage that I have over him is that I can hit him without him hitting me. So I should be running backwards and hitting him like that. But the moment I see him running away from me, that's my opening to keep hitting him again. So again, form of punishment. Okay, so right off the bat, just from level 1 itself, the first wave, this guy has fallen like this, uh, already fallen like this. Similar to the Amber Spirit, when I was playing the Amber Spirit against his Wind Ranger, uh, against his Wind Ranger, I was doing this to him as well. Right, so I knew how to play my role as the range hero. I knew how to play my role as the melee hero. Here is another example of a uh, matchup where it's commonly seen Amber against OD. Uh, so once again, it's a melee hero into a range hero. We'll apply the same concept of since I'm melee, I need to pull the guy in. Since he's range, he needs to stay away from me. So every time he can hit me, he must hit me. Uh, every time I can't hit the guy, I must pull him in so I can hit the guy. Alright, so let's play this out. Now the first thing I need to do is, I need to pull him into my range creep. So I'll click him. Okay, once I do that, immediately see what this guy is doing, he'll move in for the range creep. So my goal now is to open the flame guard and push him out as I'm moving in. Because every creep that is about to die, you need to treat it as uh, protecting the creep. You do not just look at this to deny this. You only deny this and split the wave away from him with creep aggro if this guy is strong. At level 1 and 2, almost everyone is quite equal to trait. Or at most you give something like 60-40 advantage or 70-30 advantage. But still, if you are the better player, you will be able to flip that 70-30 uh, to like a 50-50 and eventually to your side. If you know how to sustain after your traits, you know how to take favorable traits, you know how to creep aggro and manipulate the wave in such a way that every trait goes your way. So what I'm showing you here is the first level 1 and 2 so important for you before the water rune to hit people, to bring them low, to sustain before they sustain uh, and then just eventually push into the tower and kill them. 
right? So it starts with your creep aggro to range, uh, move up to them, open a spell, push them out. So it's in, uh, here's an example of uh, where we will see this happening. So right off the bat, because I know he wants to come for this, put my body there and push him out with flame guard. Okay, so notice the, the OD didn't really do this very well because if he did it properly, uh, since he's a ranged hero, he should already have been like uh, kiting me, kiting me, kiting me because he can hit me without me hitting him. So he didn't do his job properly as the ranged hero, uh, whereas I did my job properly as the melee hero because I was able to close my distance against him. But once that's done, because it's under his tower, now I need to find a way to sustain. So right off the bat, I'm thinking about a self flying out to me already. Let's say this guy regens up slower than me. I already won the lane just from level 1 itself by doing this. Of course, I had to disengage there because since the crits are already hitting me, uh, they are doing a lot of damage to me. But I've already done some damage to him as well. Even though uh, it's the more favorable matchup for him, because I already have traded him sometimes. So let's say I send a regen out, I get my health back to full. While his health is still something like this, now the advantage goes towards my side. That's why I'm saying, an OD against Ember, he would have advantage at level 1, like 60-40. But once it's like, uh, I treat him like this, even if he's level 2, I will still have advantage over him once I regen out. Now what I need to be doing is, again, I need to pull him in. So I'll creep aggro, pull him to range creep. If I have flame guard, I'll move in and I click him. If I don't have flame guard, uh, provided I'm weak, I'll just deny the creep and split away from him. Splitting away from him means I'm pulling the creeps, aggroing away from his uh, side so I can hold it towards my side. Since I hit level 2 first, uh, every time I slide, I'm just going to throw it on him. That's my form of punishment as an ember. So if you refer back to this scenario here, I actually did not creep aggro uh, to the range creep after this. Yeah, this scenario here, because a last hit was higher priority, I could still take this without being in danger of his side because it's just level 1. So that's why this was higher priority. But once this was done, if these two mini creeps were still here, hitting my mini creeps, then I would already aggro these two creeps away from him. But since these creeps are on my side, I no longer have to aggro because they already aggroed towards me. So like I said, because I solved up, he didn't solve up, now the lane goes my way, goes my favor. So again, this is just three waves in, two waves in, and already I have the advantage, I've established dominance, I have sustained, I've recovered after showing dominance. And if I push the wave into him now, he's just going to die under his tower. Now, most often than not, Players tend to struggle with being too overwhelmed with too many things happening in their screen. So you have too many creeps hitting each other, uh, you have creeps dying, you have heroes on the other side that's hitting you, you have spells, you have items, so what do you do, right? Uh, I'm, I will be listing out four things that you can do uh, that you should be prioritizing in your lane every time so you always know what to do next. So number one, we'll always look at last hits first. Meaning, uh, if there's a last hit, we'll prioritize taking a last hit the best way to do this is always to get a spell to secure the range, uh, to secure the creep at the same time hit the enemy hero with the spell also. Number two, uh, we'll deny creeps. So any creep that is below half health, we need to start already, already start killing it. Because the goal of the lane is we want the lane to go to our side and hold outside our tower. We don't want the lane to push their, their side and hold under their tower. Because this is why, why this is important is because anytime it's close to your tower, they have the buff from their tower that gives them 3 armor and 1 health regen. Uh, they are also closer to the outside, so any ganks can happen to you. Uh, at the same time, you cannot really do anything to them when they are under their tower like this. right? So that's why we want to deny our, our creeps whenever it's below half health. The goal of the lane is to have our creep die faster than theirs uh, to let the wave push to us. So we're always at the safety of our tower and our high ground. So that's second deny. Third, we'll look at creep aggro to range. That means if there's no last hits to take, if there's no denies to take, creep aggro to range must always be first priority. Why we want to creep aggro to range creep to deny our range creep is because we number one, the biggest point is we want to bait them into our range creep so we can push them out. Number two, we want to deny the range creep because it gives more XP and gold than a melee creep. Number three, we want the lane to be closer to our side. And number four, we want the range creep to die because it does the most damage in a wave and it will not die if you don't do anything to it. So in this example here, uh, what the this is a game that my student uh, has played in an ancient bracket. So replicating the Windrunner and Ember Spirit uh, matchup again, 
what Amber should be doing right now is he should wait for this uh, creeps to meet. So once these three creeps have met, the first thing he does is he moves up, he clicks this guy, and he pulls it into his range creep. Once he does that, this guy is going to move up, and there will be his open opening to move up and flame guard the guy out. Uh, but he actually leveled the wrong spell here. To have a slight of fist, you should actually have a flame guard to secure creeps at level 1. Okay, so immediately he did the right thing. He clicked him, pulled the creeps in. That's good. Because there's no last sits, there's no denies to take. But also take note that if you are a... Uh, if the last sit or deny is too dangerous to take, you are not allowed to do it. You will creep aggro otherwise. Because you are forced to run away from them if the enemy here is stronger than you. So in this case, it's okay. He pulls it in. Now what he should be looking at is... Since he level a slight of fist in lane, ideally he should always be throwing this as an Ember in lane. Because Ember's only form of harass is slight of fist. You cannot really expect to run into someone's face and right click them. Uh, unless you are able to do a creep aggro like this, that's why you flame guard and push them out. But in this case, if you have slight of fist, every time it's off cooldown, find a way to use it on the enemy hero. It's your form of harass. Unless you're saving it to counter a spell like Shell Strike to dodge it, then yes, you will save it. Also another problem that he did there is every time uh, you creep aggro to a range creep, try not to aggro away from the range creep until it dies. So for example what he did here. Because we want to deny this uh, before this guy is uh, able to take it. By doing this, this creep is uh, essentially leaving the opening for this guy to secure a range creep and he's giving him space. A very good mid laner will never give up space. So every time the guy wants to do something, a form of punishment is going to him. Like you have to be in their face all the time. So right here and then, uh, even this is a little bit of a problem because anytime creeps come under your tower, you need to know that your lane will push to them. So what he should be doing is he should actually be pulling these creeps out with him and let the wave mid here. So let's say the creeps go into his tower, always try and find a way to pull it away from your tower. Provided you're allowed to do it, of course. So if the wind runner is like uh, wind ranger is like standing up here and hitting you, then you're not allowed to do that. But in this case, he was given the luxury to do that, so he should have already been holding it outside his tower. Maybe he could have done it to this side and then run it around and then hold it here. Or he could have done it to this side, uh, run it around and then hold it here. Same thing. See, even in this scenario here, a small thing as well. Same problem. Because the wave is outside, uh, inside his tower, he should already be finding a way to pull it out here. So how he'll do this is he'll actually click this guy, move in, right click the guy, trade the guy. As he's clicking the guy, uh, creeps are actually following him out as well. So once the creeps has followed out, he has hit the guy a bit. If he has flame guard, he'll flame guard the guy and push him out. If he doesn't have flame guard, uh, he's supposed to disengage, de-aggro the creeps from him and then run back. Then just start denying everything. This way the wave will hold here longer and he's able to do things to this guy even more. Versus the creeps dying under his tower now. The wave pushing into this guy now, and this guy hits level 3 or level 4 eventually, and he's no longer able to do anything to the wind runner, uh, wind ranger eventually. So this is what uh this is what exactly what will be happening. Now, all these are creeps uncontested from the guy. Okay, so now his job should be to pull the creeps out, bait this guy in, throw slow fist on him, and just deny creeps. Of course, in this scenario, like I said, if the guy's in your face, you cannot do it, so he's forced to uh, run past the tower like this. Now notice how afraid this guy is of the wind runner. If you're playing the lane, the lane must be played the first two minutes before the water run. All types of punishment must already come out. Uh, must already come out. So for an ember to do this, every time flame guard is up, every time a creep is dying. He needs to find a way to run, it, run in, flame guard that creep, secure that creep, and push the guy out. So by right, he should already be beside this creep now. Open the flame guard, kill this creep, chase after this guy, burn him, and right click him like this. Let's see if it's the wind runner on the flip side. Wind runner will be trying to avoid this guy from doing that. So wind runner will keep his distance, uh, keep her distance if, wind, if the ember starts running in like this. But notice once again, because he didn't do this, now the entire wave goes to this guy for free and no form of punishment has been done. 
So in a span of two minutes, both sides has almost done nothing to each other other than just lost it creeps, deny creeps. Versus, if you refer to the replay uh, of the 1v1 lobby demonstration that I showed uh, to you guys, where I, I played against him, both Windrunner and also as the Ember, the amount of punishment that I did to the guy from level 1 and level 2 itself is so much more than what they are doing here. So that's the difference between winning your lane, going even and on, on, uh, in your lane, and also losing your lane. Going even and losing your lane starts something like this, where both sides are just CSing, trading, CSing, trading, uh, denying, but no form of punishment is coming out. Even if there's punishment, it's very, very minimal. So try and avoid playing the lane like this, but uh, play with more dominance, show more aggression, but do not, do not uh, force your trades. The difference between forcing trades uh, and also like taking opportunity of enemies messing up starts with your creep aggro to range. So like shown in the videos earlier. Okay, so just to summarize what we have gone through in this video, as a melee uh, hero, your job is to step one, creep aggro, step two, move in and push enemy out as enemy is coming in for range creep, step three, deny whatever you can, use a spell, push enemy out, and then step four, just reset that all over again for the first four waves. Every time you follow, regen. If you regen faster than an enemy, then you already won the lane. As a range hero, your job, step one, if you can hit enemy, hit enemy. If Step two, if you can't hit enemy, creep aggro and pull enemy in. Then step three, just deny, uh, keep harassing the enemy with spells. And step four, do that all over again uh, with regen. Alright? So I hope uh, this video was helpful um, and see you guys in the next one.